Hey everybody, uh, gonna work on the Toro lawnmower. This this lawnmower is like 25 years old, but it's just been a very good lawnmower. Um, but this season I went to use it and uh, found out that it had the uh, carburetor bowl cancer. The inside of that carburetor bowl was all corroded and it had a bad gasket. I tried cleaning the bowl and uh, putting a new gasket on, which the gasket was almost seven bucks. That was a waste of money because it will not stop leaking that's why it's up on its side right now i actually took the uh, tank off i actually was working on this without filming earlier uh in the season at one point i got frustrated and i broke the plastic fitting on the bottom here and then i went on ebay and looked for a used tank and unfortunately i couldn't find a used tank on ebay that was you know less than like 20 or 30 bucks which I didn't want to put that kind of money into this mower, so I actually just uh, drilled out and tapped with a uh, national pipe thread tap, tapped a hole, threaded that in, used some of the goop that I have that is uh, resistant to gasoline um, and Teflon tape and uh, brass fitting, and this actually, believe it or not, does not leak. But what does leak is it leaks right here at the base of the bowl of the carburetor where this nut goes through and keeps the bowl on there. And the reason why is because it's so badly corroded that once I got done cleaning it, it actually is like the hole is no longer even round. It's, it's a mess. So what I was going to do was finally send this off to the mower graveyard in the sky but then i poked around on ebay oh and for those of you who have been following along with my mower repairs i don't i've got multiple mowers right here right now that i'm working on the, the husqvarna is the other one and they're i'm taking a break on the husqvarna because if i've got these videos posting in proper chronological order you've probably seen that the new replacement carburetor for the husqvarna mower with the honda engine is working well it seems like the uh, motor is now going to be fine so i've ordered uh, replacement cables because that's got a couple of bad cables on it so i've got to meanwhile the grass keeps growing so i gotta get this uh i gotta get a mower going so i decided i'm gonna go back to the toro so i was gonna give up on the toro because of the age and when i initially looked for this carburetor this is a makumi makumi or makuni I forget, carburetor, that's on this mower. And the generic cheap Chinese ones, I couldn't find an exact replacement for this one on online cheap. But then I kept searching and I was able to find this little slice of heaven straight out of China. All right. And this was probably used on a generator or I'm not sure what, but it's got a, um, if you actually look at it, it's got a, it's got a choke that's got a plastic detent. Okay. So the problem with this carburetor, it looks like a pretty good match for the one that I have, except for a few slight differences, but I think I'm going to be able to make this work. So... Let's take that carburetor off, take this one down next to, the, next to it on the bench, and let's see if we can't make one good carb out of the two. All right, let's see how well I did here. I took a total guess on ordering this generic carburetor based solely on photographs, and I believe I searched uh, Makuni Toro. Um, I think because of the type of linkage that's on here, this is probably for a Toro snowblower. I think that listing may have even said that. I think I've been saying that this carburetor only cost me like 10 bucks, but actually this was a, as Chinese import carbs go, this was a little bit more expensive. This was like the cheapest version I could find that was close. This is listed as an OEM Makuni carburetor for Toro snowblower. And it was $13.59 plus 92 cents shipping. Um, I think this came in from China through Texas or something like that. Whereas, uh, interestingly enough, the other carburetor, the other generic carburetor that I put on the Husqvarna Honda mower, uh, that was only 10 bucks shipping included. And I'll tell you what, 
this is not a Makuni carburetor. I highly doubt that because there is not one identifier anywhere on the body of this carburetor. Whereas the genuine Makuni carburetor uh, clearly says Makuni Corp in large letters right there. But if you look closely, it does say brand, unbranded generic. Carburetor carb fits for snowblower. Fits for snowblower. When you see wording like fits for snowblower, that's a dead giveaway. That is, uh, that is a translation. Somebody's attempt at English as a second language. So anyways, we got all of these nice pictures though, and that's the key when you're trying to make something, make some magic happen here. Okay, we can look at all of these photographs and look at it. And what I saw in these photographs was enough to convince me to take a chance on buying this carburetor. So I did. So what I noticed was, if we take this gasket off, it's going to have the same exact look as this one. Um, the bore, okay, on the carburetors... I would have to take that gasket off probably now let's just see for the heck of it so we're dealing with Asian carburetors so we're gonna be looking at millimeters um, so that's gonna be an 18 millimeter bore on the on the new one that came in and that's gonna be a 18 millimeter bore on the original so that's that's good um, thing is I don't know what horsepower snowblower this was going on it might be jetted for uh, more fuel delivery than what that mower is going to need. I'm not going to worry about that right now. So what I'm looking at here is I'm looking at uh, the biggest problems. Well, first off, we've got two lines. This is the fuel line coming in, which is exactly what I expected the fuel line coming in right there. But you notice this other hose that sticks down right here? This is a vent. And what they did on this one for whatever reason is they've got the vent facing up now that is probably pressed into the body of the carburetor and they probably use some sort of a adhesive to bond that but the thing is as long as that doesn't obstruct the linkage I don't think I'm gonna necessarily have to do anything about that the only thing I'm worried about is dirt or debris falling in there the other thing I was thinking was, you know what I could do is I could actually cut this off right here near the body, leave a little stub sticking out as a nipple, and actually put this hose that's on here on this one. So I'm not worried about that. If you look at the body layout of the carburetor side by side, you can see they're very similar. So, good news is my throttle, bod uh, my throttle butterfly linkage is identical. So really all I see for, for a physical swap over, all I've got to do is change these choke linkages. So I've got to get this linkage onto this carburetor, and as long as the shaft diameters are the same, I should be able to do that. Well, I got one of the two screws out, and the other one, unfortunately, is starting to strip out. One bit of advice these screws when they get stuck in there they could be a bear to deal with uh, but try several different screwdrivers for fit make sure you feel kind of get a feel for it and see if it's camming out ahead of time and then put a lot of pressure on it when you're trying to turn it and then the trick is to kind of feel when it's not gonna happen and give up right away and unfortunately I push the issue and I kind of stripped out this one so now I found another bit it's got an even sharper tip on it that seems like that might grab a little bit and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use it to give a little bit of a shock Let's see if I can't break those threads free so hopefully I did two things by doing that hopefully I gave some mechanical shock that might help break the uh, threads free and also maybe drove that tip into the damaged screw head a little further. That's it. Hopefully the screws 
uh, the same size in the new carburetor. Because these screws are actually better designed. They've got a large head on them, almost like a built-in washer or a flange. So now we we'll take the butterfly out and this whole shaft should come right out. shock the cheap Chinese screw stripped out real easily there's probably some thread lock or something that's applied to these to keep the screws from vibrating loose during operation and possibly getting sucked into the engine so I've managed to completely destroy that screw head the, the screws are very soft metal they're very poor quality they weren't really made to be removed like they were one-shot deals anyways so I uh, was gonna drill it out. The problem is the the head is so bad now that I don't even think I can I can get a drill to uh, to start anywhere near the center on that thing. So what I've got is I've got a little tiny uh, burr, very small one. You can see compared to my pinky finger how small that is. And I've got that on my uh, my little, little hand. This is a knockoff of a Dremel. Should be able to knock off this head. Then I'm gonna not need this shaft, so I don't even have to worry about drilling out that hole and any of that. Yeah, the bodies look identical, so this should go right in here. All right, hold on. Before I do this, though, what's the deal with these springs? Do I even want those in there? All right, see these two springs here? The purpose of these two springs are for the little detents on that choke mechanism to uh, to be able to snap into Let's see if we can't get these out All right, so by looking at the uh, the old one, I was able to determine that this little tab right here actually goes up against this as a stop. So I know that this lever needs to go in just like this, okay? And then obviously that's the side of the shaft that faces out. And I know that the uh, there's a flat side on this Venturi, so the flat side of that's going to have to go down there. So this is going to have to whoop, go on at an angle like this, just like that. All right. Any reusable screws? This one's reusable. Well, I'm going to just put a little tiny drop of uh, Loctite on the threads. There you go, Franken carburetor. Oh, so guess what I found out on this uh, on this little vent tube on the carburetor here. I pulled this vent tube off, and look, it's actually it's thin wall tubing. It's almost like it's hollowed out. It's thicker on this end. It's like they hollowed out the tubing to make it get thin wall, so that it actually goes over the OD of this body of the car, the casting part. 
just slips on there. See? This part right here. So, if I uh, if I remove this altogether, I can just put this vent tube on and Bob's your uncle. And it is just a light press fit. And so put this on. And the aforementioned Robert is now a member of the family. Okay, so that's looking good. Now, I'm wondering about this little jet right here. It's like a little metering doohickey. Um, got that one on there. Sometimes these will have a little number stamped on them to denote their size. Yeah, I'm just not going to mess with this any further. I'm just going to throw this on there the way it is and see if it runs. Well, it's very hard to pull that, but I've had this up on its side for a long time. Sometimes that can cause oil to leak into the combustion chamber. And I'm just going to take the spark plug out to be on the safe side and crank it over a little bit. See all that oil? It's not supposed to be in there. I have to clean the plug. See if you get oil all over the plug like that, it fouls the plug. What that means is that means that the plug can't make a good spark. So it'll make it difficult to start if not impossible. The other problem, the other reason you don't want a bunch of oil in the cylinder there is because the, it can cause what's called hydro lock. Which is funny because hydro is from a Greek word and it has something to do with water. I think that's a Greek word. Anyways, most of our words come from Greek words. But anyways, hydro lock is not talking about water, it's just talking about the liquid in there, the fluid, takes up that space that normally the air is compressed in, and fluid can't compress like air, so it causes problems. That's why it was hard for me to pull this. You know, I tried pulling it. How easy it pulls now? Well, for one thing, there's no compression because I've got the spark plug out, but also it's because that oil was in there. Now we get that oil out of there. Hopefully we get this plug cleaned enough so that it will actually make a spark. If we're able to get this to start, it will, uh, it'll make a uh, ton of smoke when it first runs because it's going to uh, have to burn off that oil that's left behind. Where's the muffler? Right there. So... The whole, ho the pipe's facing that way, so you see a bunch of smoke coming out of there. There's probably also going to be some oil in the muffler. I had it tilted up this way, so it's just going to be a mess. All right, just use a little bit of that cleaner to hopefully clean out the remainder of the oil and the spark plug because I'm still not getting spark. Still getting it now. So bright out here. Peter, pull that cord. Good. Yeah, got it. We'll get spark. Finally. Ow, ow. 
Yeah, this cord's a little short now. thing. Alright, so I just checked the oil level and it's way too high, uh, which means there's probably gas contamination in the oil, in the crankcase. So the best thing at this point is to just drain the whole thing off and uh, put in fresh oil. Alright, so I'm going to change the oil on this thing. Uh, for whatever reason, the manufacturer put the drain plug here on the engine and it sits high up on the deck. So if you take this plug out, it almost seems like by design they expect the oil to just spill into this trough area on the deck, which doesn't seem like uh, something I want to happen. So, I took a few minutes, I took a little piece of flashing, I cut it to about that long, and then I stuck it in my brake and I put a bend in it, and then I actually manually bended it just a little bit more to form it into a nice little trough. So my plan is, we'll put the trough under there, I'll take the plug out, the old fluid will hopefully run right down the trough and into my, uh, my waste bucket here waste oil which then goes back to the auto parts store there's a local there's a local company that uses they have a huge shop that they heat with waste oil heaters and they uh, they collect it up from the auto parts store and I'm more than happy to use it for free heat in the winter time that's gonna actually because it's gonna yeah.
Let's see if we can't carefully tilt this up. Without it falling off. It's flowing about the same amount, so. Yeah, so that experiment wasn't a 100% success. But it beats dumping all of that oil onto the deck. All right, we get the oil all topped off, clean oil at the proper level. Let's see if it runs any differently with the, with the oil level correct. Tweak the idle adjustment and uh, try the air-fuel mixture. What happened? It shuts off when you go to full throttle from, from uh, idle, which might mean that the uh, air-fuel mixture is not set correctly. Well, the problem is that in their genius design, they put the air fuel mixture screw up underneath here and it's very hard to get at. All right, so the problem is with the air filter off. The air filter is also a spacer, so these studs aren't threaded all the way. So to keep the carburetor tight, squeezing this gasket down, I put a couple of uh, nuts in here on each side to act as a spacer. And so now the carburetor is secure. I should be able to run it like this. Uh, I got myself a uh, pretty small screwdriver to get in here to the air fuel mixture and also I've got myself a little short Phillips head to get on the uh, the idle adjustment so let's give this another shot having a real hard time adjusting the air fuel mixture on the carburetor so I ended up deciding to take out the uh, this little pilot jet 
on the top here and change it out for the one that uh, is in the original carburetor. I made sure it was clean. And that actually improved the high speed. Uh, it's still stalling when you snap the throttle from low speed to high. So I had just started trying to readjust it and then uh, broke for lunch. So I figure I'll try now and see how it's acting. Now it won't start. All right, so as I was saying, now it doesn't seem to want to start. Now I just turned the screw all the way in and backed it out one and a half turns. It should be a good starting point. Uh, this is just nuts. No. Smell gas. What the heck's going on? Try the spark plug. Ooh. It's wet. Get spark. Acting like it's starving for fuel. Plenty of gas. What I want to try and do is change the main jet in this carburetor to the, the one from the other carburetor because it's closer to the right size. All right. The kids fighting in the background constantly and probably ended up doing a ton of editing to this video and but uh <laughs> to sum it up um i ended up getting it to restart and what i found i think was the problem actually was my fuel line was too long with that new fitting that i put on the tank and what that was causing was it was causing a situation where the fuel line came in at this angle and it, it was bunching up and it was turning up and then going down so when the fuel level in the tank got down to a certain point fuel wouldn't flow I could literally take the tank off its mounts and tilt the tank let the bowl refill and then it would work again that was one of my problems I'm not sure if that was the only problem or not I now have it adjusted and running to a point where I think I'm just gonna quit and say that this is as good as it's gonna get and put this mower back to work because I just did a little bit of test cutting and it seemed to work okay. So I don't think when it's hot that I should have to turn the choke on to restart it. So that's why I still think we've got things that aren't quite right here. Um, I still can't snap the throttle from low, or low idle to high idle without it stalling. I have to ease the uh, RPMs up slowly. So that's not correct. And lastly, when I engage the blade clutch, which uh, puts a load on the engine, um, I have to be a little bit easy on that because if I try and engage it too quickly, it'll stall the engine. So I turned up the uh, high speed RPMs just a, just a smidge. That helps with the stalling when the, engaging the blade. So um, I'm gonna give it one more test before I uh, put the air cleaner back on, hopefully for the final time. I did cut that fuel line shorter, so now it's got a straight run into the carburetor like it should. So choke on.
doesn't want to start now. See? Pointless. I mean, come on. What the heck's going on here? The only thing I haven't tried is a new spark plug. fuel line going in front of the governor uh, lever and it's going to go behind it I guess because it's rubbing up against it. just washed the inside of that housing because it was pretty uh, pretty dirty because the uh, filter that goes in here it's the type of foam filter that has oil on it and the oil helps the dust actually stick to it instead of getting by it but since there was a lot of oil on the inside of that housing and no filter in there it was a lot of dirt <laughs> clean that out uh, just for the heck of it it's been sitting maybe 15 minutes so it's still Still warm. Let's try it. Choke off low throttle. Nope. All right. Let's try choke off high throttle. Nope. Choke on. Nope. Didn't get to it quick enough.